In this video, we're going to discuss the use of boundary conditions in molecular dynamics. So a boundary condition is something where we want to represent an infinite system with a finite sample that is going to repeat beyond the sample size. Okay, so this isn't a problem for gas phase molecules because gas phase molecules, they rarely collide with, well, they, they collide fairly frequently, but from their perspective, most of the time they're they're fairly alone. They see very few other molecules and they're pretty much doing their own thing. In condensed phases, that is not true. So in liquids and in solids, typically the atoms are surrounded by other molecules and atoms ions, which are very close to it. They're in fairly regular contact and something like a bulk water or a crystal, you know, a sodium, a sodium chloride crystal, a benzene crystal, uh, liquid water, you know, liquid DMSO. That's a system where to get to the bulk, you need quite a large sample size. But once you have a large enough sample, it's pretty much that just forever. So from the perspective of an individual drop of water in the ocean, you know, it might as well go on forever in terms of what the ocean is doing. So to model that types of, of system, we want to have some type of energy function, which represents the fact that our, to its perspective, the system is infinite, but we don't want to do an actual infinite system because we have finite computing power. So we want a small but large enough system that is going to effectively repeat forever. Okay, so how do we do that? We do that with what's called boundary conditions. So our system is going to be effectively inside of a box. You can make it other, other shapes besides just a you know rectilinear prism, but it's simplest to do a rectilinear prism and that's what's done most often in some some things use other types of shapes. So we can use something where we specify the dimensions of the X, Y, and Z components. They don't necessarily have to be the same. So we could say, for example, this might be 30 angstroms in the X dimension, maybe 25 in Y, maybe it's 40 in Z, who knows? Various things, but generally large enough for whatever system we have such that we're representing the sample size well. For representing liquid water, 30 or 40 angstroms on each side might be good enough for something like representing a protein or a chromosome that probably isn't enough. It all depends on the system. Okay, so let's say what are what do we have, want to say about these coordinates? So for x, we have that the values of x that are allowed are 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than dx. So the value of x is restricted to that kind of domain. For y, same thing but with dy y is between 0 and dy and similarly for z dz there 0 is less than z which is less than dz okay so this is what is our total system so our original system or our real particles are all inside this type of system there but now what about everything outside here. We said we wanted it to be infinite, so it's got to repeat forever outside these boundaries. Okay, so what we do there is we have the original. So the original particles, particles being atoms, molecules, whatever is the minimum component of your system, the original particles at x, y, and Z, we'll see what are called images or image particles at X plus NX DX, Y plus NY DY, and Z plus NZ DZ. And in this case, NX, NY, and NZ are all integers. Okay, so if you go to X plus DX, there's another image particle for our original particle. So if our original particle is here at X, Y, and then let's say Z is coming out at us. So at X plus DX, there's another image particle. At x minus dx, there's an image particle. At x minus 2x, there's another one. x minus 3x, 4x, all the way to infinity in this direction, and then all the way to infinity in that direction. 
Similarly, x plus, uh, similarly y plus dy, y plus 2 dy, all the way to positive infinity there, all the way to negative infinity in this direction, and in z as well. So all possible values of nx and y and nz are observed except for the original particle, which is at 0, 0, 0 for all three of those. Okay, and then I'll note that minus infinity is less than nx, ny, and nz, which is less than infinity. So all three of them go to infinity and negative infinity. All three of them are integers. All right, so as I showed there, so we got our original particle, and it's surrounded by images and not only in a single dimension, but in multiple dimensions. So at x plus dx and y plus dy, there's one. x plus 2x and 3dy, x minus 2x and minus 10dy. So at many image charges here, and it's going, to, it's going to see all of those. And so all the other particles see all of themselves and all of the images of all the other particles as well. Because keep in mind, every single particle inside our original box here is going to have an image inside of every one of these boxes. So in fact, if I have a particle that's on, this, on the lower side of this box, this particle is actually going to close, more closely interact with the image than the original particle, because the image is closer to it. And similarly, the one down here is going to interact with the image of this one more strongly than it does with this one. So then there are mathematical techniques to carry out how you actually do these interactions and sum them over all these infinite cases. A lot of times involves Fourier transforms and switching uh, from spatial dimensions to frequency dimensions. A lot of more advanced mathematical techniques that I am not studied up on at the moment, but I'll just mention that there are techniques to get the energy of infinite systems there, so you can't actually do it. Um, so there's two really different cases that we want to worry about. For molecular mechanics, we want the non-bonded energy terms to converge to some value that we can compute for our total energy so that we can do things like geometry optimization, molecular dynamics, energy gradients, all that good stuff. So for the van der Waals energy, remember that looked like something times minus 1 over r to the 6th plus something times 1 over r to the 12th. So there was a repulsive 1 over r to the 12th term and an attractive minus 1 over r to the 6th term. So that r to the 12th term decays very, very quickly. That r to the minus 6 decays more slowly. But in fact, r to the minus 6 converges quite quickly. So van der Waals, as I said, has that proportional to 1 over r to the 6th distance. So r to the 6th, uh, the second image is going to interact um, what is 2 to the 6th? That's going to be 64. So the second image acts 60, interacts 64 times more weakly than the first image with this one. And then the third image, uh, much, more, much more than that. So it's pretty much only the nearby neighborhood that the van der Waals interacts with. The problem in boundary conditions is electrostatics. That's where you have to use all that crazy math to get everything to converge because electrostatics converges very very slowly. It is proportional to 1 over r. Now you might say, well, 1 over r still converges. It's going down. It's approaching 0 as your distance gets large. But there's a problem in that the number of particles that you see as you go out with distance is going up by r cubed. So we have, at a given distance, we have not only this particle, but also this one, this one, and this one. And then, so it's the particle in these two dimensions is going up quadratically. If we include the z dimension as well, it goes up by r cubed. So r cubed over r is r squared. So that gives you that gives you a problem. So what you actually have to have, you have to have must have neutral unit cell. So this is this whole thing here is called a unit cell where we have the actual where all of our original system is so our unit cell has to be electrically neutral otherwise this electrostatics term will become infinite as we sum over infinity so various little caveats like that 
but for the most part in most molecular dynamic simulations even if they don't mention it there's typically implied that there's some type of boundary condition some unit cell that is going to repeat forever and that's pretty much true of any system or any simulation that takes place in a condensed phase in either liquids or solids.